Okay, welcome everybody to today's class. Have we got everything on the board there? I'm not sure we have actually. Um, I'll just try and bring it a little bit further down, that's better. So today we're looking at commas, but I want to look at commas in cumulative sentences and coordinate sentences. It's not very good those two words, are they? They're quite vague, quite, um, they're not very uh, easy to read, so I'll quickly write them again. Cumulative phrases will be on this side. Cumulative phrases don't have commas. No commas. However, coordinate phrases do have commas. And coordinate simply means in series. When we have a list of items, there are two different ways we could list those items. We could list those items in a cumulative fashion in which case the items accumulate, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Or we can use it in a coordinate fashion. Um, if we use a list in a coordinate fashion, the list is in series, which simply means that every item in the list is of equal worth, that they're very, very similar kinds of phrases or adjectives or adverbial phrases, whatever they are, they're gonna be very, very similar um, and they're going to be of equal worth. Now, let's look at this first of all with adjectives, which I have done before in another class. But I want to show you how you can extrapolate from the conclusions we came to concerning cumulative adjectives and coordinate adjectives. You can go further and apply the same logic to many different sentences, especially with prepositional phrases, but also with subordinate clauses. So let's see what I'm talking about. So you may remember from a previous lesson that if you have a large Indian elephant, you don't have a comma between the two adjectives. Now, why is that? It's because the second adjective is actually much more important than the first adjective. What I mean is Indian modifies elephant and large modifies Indian elephant. So that one modifies that one, and that one modifies these two as a unit. In that sense, they're cumulative. We cannot say the same for a blue, white, and red flag. We can actually change the order of those adjectives. Um, we can say a red, white, and blue flag, and idiomatically that is usually what we say, a red, white, and blue flag. But there's nothing wrong, wrong with a white, blue, and red flag, or a blue, white, and red flag, because they're all of equal worth. It's not the same as the large Indian elephant, it's very different. And we can see that by doing two tests. We can do, uh, and I suggest always doing both tests, by the way. We can put an and in between every coordinate adjective. We can say a blue and white and red flag, and we can swap them round. We can put them in any order, and it's because they're of equal worth. That's why we can put them in any order. We can say, um, a, well, I just said a red, white and blue flag, a white, blue and red flag. We can put them in any order, and it doesn't matter, okay? And we can't say the same for these two. We can't say an Indian large elephant. It spoils the meaning. And it's because that one modifies elephant and that one modifies both of those. So if we swap them around, it messes all of that up. So I hope that's clear that cumulative are not all worth the same. The elements are not all worth the same. Coordinate, they are all worth the same. They're of equal worth. And you can see that because we've got three colors and colors are pretty equal, yeah? We haven't got different types of adjectives here. If we um, talk about something else, um, perhaps uh, we talk about a red, a blue, white and red, and then we talk about the material of the flag. We talk about, I don't know, what kind of material could a flag be made of? Let's say it's made of cotton, okay? Just for argument's sake, just for the example, cotton flag. Now that cotton is not the same as blue, white and red. It's not of equal worth. This one is different. It's telling us what the flag is made of. And for that reason, this one does not go with blue, white and red. We would norm we'd normally take the and out of here, I think, and say blue, white, red, um, uh, cotton flag. A blue, white, red, no, a blue, white and red. Yeah, fine, I don't know why I'm taking it out there. A blue, white and red cotton flag. 
okay? And this one is not equal to those ones, okay? Um, now let's look how we can apply this logic to other sentences, because I think this is very important. Have a look at these prepositional phrases, and we're going to start with adverbial prepositional phrases, because prepositional phrases can function as adverbs, as they do here, or as adjectives, as they do here. So firstly, let's look at, he lives in a flat at the top of the building. Three prepositional phrases, in a flat, and then at the top is describing in, the, in a flat, and then of the building is describing at the top. <laughs> so can you see how they accumulate and we certainly don't have a comma there? We don't need a comma because we mustn't have a comma, otherwise it separates how one prepositional phrase is describing or modifying another prepositional phrase. And we don't want to do that. These prepositional phrases accumulate. So no commas here. But I took this one from Harry Potter. I saw in the centre of the high table, comma, in a large gold, gold chair, comma, sat Dumbledore. Now, these two phrases, they are coordinate. We could put them in any order. We can't do that here. We can't say he lives of the building at the top in a flat. Doesn't make any sense. But we can say in a large gold chair in the centre of the high table sat Dumbledore. So these are of equal worth. This one is worth exactly the same as this one, which is why we have a comma separating them. And if we do our test, yes, we can put an and there instead of the comma. And that's our test. Can we put an and there? Can we swap them round? We can. So these two are coordinate adjectives. Uh, sorry, coordinate prepositional phrases. They're acting adverbially because they're modifying sat. Um, and there certainly needs to be a comma here if we don't use an and because they're coordinate. These ones mustn't have a comma because they're cumulative. So I hope that shows you how prepositional phrases follow the same logic as adjectives do with concerning cumulative and coordinate. Now, let's look at adjectival pre prepositional phrases now because prepositional phrases can function like adjectives as well. So these prepositional phrases are describing the policeman with a bottle of wine under his arm. And again, they are cumulative. That's describing the bottle and that's describing where the wine is. So they're cumulative, they're accumulating and we mustn't have commas here. Otherwise it separates the prepositional phrase from the um, noun that they are describing. Now have a look at a very famous speech by Abraham Lincoln. Um, he said, um, that government of the people, comma, by the people, comma, for the people, comma, shall not perish from the earth. Now, of the people, by the people, and for the people are all describing the same thing. They're all describing government. And in that sense, they are of equal worth. They're all applying to the same noun. We can't say the same here. You notice that with a bottle describes the policeman, of wine describes the bottle, under his arm tells us where the wine was. So it's very, very different. These ones accumulate. You couldn't put them in a different order. These ones you could. In fact, I found them in a different order, funnily enough. I'm not sure which way round it goes. Maybe one of our American friends can tell us. But it's, maybe it's that, that government of the people, for the people, by the people shall not perish. Maybe it's like that, yeah? We can mix up these prepositional phrases, we can swap them round, and we can put an and between them. We can say that government of the people, and by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. That final comma is there to stop the confusion of if you get rid of it, because if you get rid of it, that could be a coordinating conjunction. And then suddenly it means something different, for the people shall not perish from the earth. We don't want that confusion, so we put the comma in there as well. Um, you see that in a lot of old literature where you've got the subject and a comma and then the verb, which is quite weird, but it's trying to stop confusion. It's trying to stop you thinking that for is not a preposition, but a coordinating conjunction. Okay, so I, I hope you can see that all of those prepositional phrases are of equal worth. Now I'm going to show you that the same logic even is, can be used for subordinate clauses and commas. If the subordinate clauses are coordinate, if they're of equal worth, 
use commas between them. And here are some examples. Whereas if the subordinate cla clauses are cumulative, if they modify the previous subordinate clause and the previous subordinate clause, then you don't want commas. So I've just got one example over here. I will help, main clause, because you were good to me, subordinate clause, when I was young, subordinate clause. And that one's modifying I'll help, yeah? Why would I help? Because you were good to me. And when will I help? Uh, well, so, not when will I help, but um, when were you good to me? You were good to me when I was young. So they accumulate. They're not both modifying the same thing. Now let's look over here. I'll help you when I have time and if I can be bothered. So I'm saying here, I'll help you if I can be bothered and when I have time. That's why we got a comma between those two subordinate clauses, because they're both equal. They're equally acting in an adverbial way. They're modifying that help. I will help you when I have time and I will help you if I can be bothered. Yeah, so they're in series. They're, they're equally weighted. It's a 50-50. They're two different conditions that are of equal weight. It's not the same here. They're different. They're modifying each other. That one's modifying that one. That one's modifying that one. These two are both modifying the same verb. OK, let's look at another one. Frustrated by the delays, angry with the staff, I trudged back to my seat. Here we have a participle, frustrated, and then we have an adjective. Remember that participles and adjectives, participles are adjectives. Um, we could change that for a participle. We could say instead of angry, we could say infuriated by the staff. Frustrated by the delays, infuriated by the staff. And then we've got two participles and maybe it's even more parallel, which is nice. Um, but notice that frustrated by the delays and angry with the staff, we could swap them round. We could say angry with the staff and frustrated by the delay, delays. I trudged back to my seat. So when you've got these uh, coordinate adjectival phrases, they are adjectival, um, that are modifying I, they're both modifying I, they're not modifying each other, they don't accumulate, they're coordinate, so we need a comma. Now I wanted to show you that it's not just adjectival phrases, it's not just adverbial phrases, even noun phrases, when they're listed and they're of equal worth, you will have commas. So this is an old ancient Greek quote, it's from Heraclitus. He said that day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. And notice that he's got a comma between, that, that, that's the Oxford comma there, if we put one there. Um, some school, schools wouldn't do that, for example, U, UK universities wouldn't do that, but American ones would, and um, Oxford University certainly puts one there. So you've got noun phrase, noun phrase, and noun phrase is noun phrase. And because we've got a list of noun phrases, they're coordinate, they're in series, they're of equal worth, they will have commas there. So I hope that clears up um, one more thing concerning commas, because I know I've already spoken about commas in a lot of videos, but I thought this was very important. It shows you that when you have things in series, that logic of the interchangeable adjectives, it can be applied to adverbial prepositional phrases, adjectival prepositional phrases, subordinate clauses. When, when the subordinate clause is an adjective, an adverb, a noun, it doesn't matter. Still, you can use the same logic, and the logic is summed up in this box. Can I put an and in between the elements? Can I swap them round? Yes, yes, they're coordinate. They need commas, OK? No, no, they're cumulative. They mustn't have commas. Simples. OK, please, um, like the video if you've enjoyed watching this, and uh, I hope to see you all soon. It's a bit hot today, so I've got to stop. <laughs>